there is one skill that your starting quarterback must possess. One skill. You've got that skill, you've got a big gap, and then you've got the rest of the skills in your criteria. And to really blow your minds, this skill has nothing to do with physical ability. Next on Constructing the Quarterback. This is QB Unfiltered. I'm Coach Keith Simons, and this is Constructing the Quarterback. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the number one skill that your starting quarterback must possess. We're going to talk about how this leads to success. We're also going to talk about how this leads to failure with your offense. Okay, let's talk about the number one skill that your QB must have. And it doesn't matter what level we're talking about. High school, college, NFL. This is it. There is nothing close to it. I really feel that there are a lot of general managers and front office people in the NFL that miss the boat on this when they're evaluating college quarterbacks to draft. It's all about physical skill level. I think uh, two areas that they miss in evaluating QBs, number one is what's in here. You know, what's pumping underneath his jersey and underneath his shoulder pads. And then the second thing that I think they miss on, and this is the number one skill that your quarterback must have, and that is he must be a great decision maker. He must be a great decision maker. End of story, non-negotiable. If your quarterback possesses some of those other skills that I listed earlier, but isn't a great decision maker, those other ones don't matter. Doesn't make any difference. Um, there are a lot of coaches out there coaching football that struggle offensively or coaches that have lost their jobs because they played quarterbacks that were poor decision makers. And it's that crucial to the success of your offense. Um, it's the number one killer of any offense at any level. I will guarantee you this. You can have the studliest offensive lineman known to man. You can have the slickest, toughest, fastest running back in the league. You can have the fastest, most highly skilled, best hands receivers that know how to run routes, get open, run by guys, know where to sit in grass, make plays. You can have all of that. But if you've got a quarterback that's not a good decision maker, your offense is going to sputter. It's going to be wildly inconsistent. Wildly inconsistent. And on the flip side of that, if you've got a QB that doesn't have um, some of those attributes that we talked about earlier, he can overcome that and he can make your offense a really, really good offense by his decision-making process. It's that important. Now, I'm also going to tie in in this talk because I really feel that there are two types of poor decision makers at the quarterback position. Number one is the, is the guy that just has problems making slow, slower decisions. He doesn't see things develop quickly enough. His anticipation isn't uh, good enough to make the uh, offense hum. And then you've got on the other side of that, and this really happens in high school, I think, a lot, is selfish kids playing the quarterback position and uncoachable kids. And uncoachable and selfish are basically twins. And in a lot of cases, well, 
every case that I've been associated with in my coaching career, if I had to deal with a quarterback that was selfish and uncoachable, he was a horseshit decision maker and he didn't play. Okay. He didn't play. And we'll talk about that more here in a second. So with your quarterback and making decisions, there are three phases of your offense where this comes into play. The first one is in the run game. And there are a lot of offenses out there that are a check with me situation, which means the run play is called, but the direction is not given. And the quarterback will make the decision and tell the O-line and the running back which way they're running the run play when the ball snapped and how he calls his cadence. That's check with me. And your quarterback is always trying to put your offensive lineman in the best case scenario for them to block the D-line and the linebackers in the box. So you've got, uh, for consideration, you've got the front, the shades on the front, you've got linebacker alignment. You've also got uh, angles with your offensive line. What gives them the best angles to knock the defensive lineman off the ball and to get up to uh, the second level linebackers? Okay, that's a pretty easy uh, job for a quarterback in the run game with a check with me. Then you've got the second phase, which is RPOs, run pass option. A little bit trickier, but not really, especially if you have your quarterback make the decision pre-snap, which I believe is the way to go. And I'm going to give you an example of what I'm talking about here with an RPO one of, uh, one of the common RPOs is to have the inside zone run play and attach it with a bubble screen to the receivers where you could go either way, bubble screen right or bubble screen left, or run punch screens, punch screen to the right, punch screen to the left, and then your quarterback makes the decision because you've got your offensive lineman and your running back running the inside zone. You've got your receivers executing the screen footwork and the stock blocking on the perimeter and your QB decides before the ball snapped what he's going to do. So if you've got a light box, you know, they, a five man box, for example, you probably in a lot of cases are going to run the inside zone. If they bring six guys into the box and they're lighter on the perimeter, or you've got a, a leverage advantage, say for example, on bubble screens, you're going to stand up as a quarterback and just throw the ball out on the perimeter and let your guy uh, make some yards out there. So that's RPO situation. That's a decision that the quarterback makes. And again, that's not that difficult. The phase of the game, the third phase that gets QBs in trouble and really exposes poor decision makers is in the passing game. In the passing game, a couple of examples of selfish, uncoachable, bad decision. They're all lumped together, but predetermining your throw. Okay. Most of the passing game today is built. Uh, when you see zone coverage, you're putting one defensive guy in conflict, which means you're putting the receiver outside of him and inside of him. And the quarterback reads that defender, whichever way he goes, the QB throws the other way. Or you put a receiver behind him and a guy in front of him and the quarterback reads that defender, whichever way he goes, the quarterback throws to the other guy. Okay, most pass offenses are set up for quarterbacks to read that versus zone coverage. Now, if you're getting man coverage, that's a whole different ball game. In man coverage, you're looking matchups, you're looking for your best receiver against their lesser DB or outside linebacker or safety, your receivers are bursting away and you're just looking for basically uh, going to the one-on-one -on -one winner. Okay. But with zone defenses, if you've got a quarterback who makes the proper reads post snap or he's keying that one defender, it's easy. It's easy. 
Okay. And where quarterbacks fall with the trap that they fall into that gets them in trouble. One example of it is predetermining their throws. So instead of keying a defender on the snap, the quarterbacks already made up his mind before the ball snapped where he's going to go with the throw. And when you do that, that's like flipping a coin 50, 50. And that's not good enough. You know, I'm not a rocket scientist. But I think that there's a big difference between reading a defensive guy and knowing that if you do that and you play catch where you put the ball on the receiver and he catches it, probably eight out of 10 times, you're going to have a completion and positive yardage versus 50-50, where if I guess right, I might get a completion. But if I guess wrong with the predetermination, it's train wreck. Okay, how do you as a coach know that that's going on? Well, trust your eyes. You know what the route is. You know what defense they're playing, what coverage they're playing. You know what the quarterback's um, reads are based on that coverage. And as the play develops and starts, you know, using your eyeballs, where the quarterback should be going with the ball. Okay, now another way to determine that something's not right with your QB's decision-making, and this never lies, 100%, is his completion percentage. If you've got a quarterback, let me just say this, you want your quarterback to be at 60% or higher. And if you're playing in a pass offense where you've got uh, a great scheme and your quarterback has consistent, easy post-snap reads, then you really should be at 65, 70, 75 percent or higher completion percentage. If you see a quarterback throwing in the 50 percentile range, that's not good. And if he's less than 50, if he's in the 40 percent, that's horrible. That is almost physically impossible to do. Okay. And so um, that's a pretty 100 percent predictor of a QB that is predetermining throws or um, isn't making the right decision when the balls snap. Another trap that quarterbacks fall into that um, make them poor decision makers in the passing game is the quarterback that has fallen in love with the ooh-ah throw. The ooh-ah throw. So here's what I'm talking about. You're running uh, four vertical, okay? And defensively, they're lining up in two high, cover two. And one of your slot receivers is running a bender route. And your running back is running a check down. And a check down is a little, little hitch route about four yards deep past the line of scrimmage where he's just sitting down right in front of the quarterback and in front of the linebackers in the box. And your quarterback's read is really simple. You've got that bender by the slot receiver. If those inside linebackers get depth underneath that bender, your running back's standing all by himself. If the linebackers hug up on that check down route, then you've got all kinds of space and grass to stick that bender into. The quarterbacks that fall in love or have fallen in love with the ooh-ah throw aren't going to be happy with throwing a little four yard completion to the back. Nope. They want to throw the ball where the crowd goes, Ooh, ah, and the coach goes, shit. Are you kidding me? Your running back is standing all by himself. How do I know coaches say that? Because I've said it once or twice in my career. And I've always said this to quarterbacks Always know where your running back is, okay? Defenses cannot account for backs in the passing game. And defensive coordinators are always telling their underneath coverage, get underneath, get depth, get underneath those seam throws and those deep throws. Let the offense complete the ball short, and then we'll rally up and tackle. To which I say, thank you very much. We're going to complete. 50 of those this game at five, eight, 10 yards a clip. And we're going to go up and down the field and blow the bulbs out of the scoreboard. 
but you got the quarterback that wants to force the ball downfield on a ooh ah throw. And what happens with that is it's either knocked down, incomplete, you're off the field and punt, or you throw a pick and you're off the field watching your defense play. And in both situations, you've got the running back or the short route that's standing there looking like this to the quarterback, you know. And there's another predictor right there with the um, completion percentage. You've got quarterbacks that are in love with the ooh-ah throw. They're going to be in the 50%, 40% completion percentage. And then this last one, and this totally, totally falls under the category of selfish and uncoachable. You've got quarterbacks that in their decision-making process, it's not what's built into the offense. It's not what you as the quarterback coach or offensive coordinator or head coach want. It's what they, the quarterback, feels is right. It's where they want to go with the ball. It's what they want to do with it. Um, now, I said earlier that decision-making with your quarterback is number one, end of story, non-negotiable. I want to say this right now. If you've got a starting quarterback that is showing those tendencies, bad decision-making, selfish, uncoachable, Get them out right now, put them on the sideline and play your number two quarterback and then coach your number two quarterback up and make your number two guy, your number one guy. Okay. If you continue to go with a quarterback who's a poor decision maker, you're going to guarantee that you will struggle offensively guaranteed. Okay. And here's another phase to this and this one is probably the phase or the phrase that has really killed tons of offenses and has really lost a bunch of coaches their jobs and that is this we're playing this guy as our quarterback this guy is our starter because he has the best potential Holy shit. If that phrase ever comes out of your mouth, just slap yourself. Playing a quarterback with the best potential. <laughs> and, the, and again, that's where I go, I go back to the NFL draft. You know, they're, they fall in love with these guys who are six foot four, six foot five, 225 pounds with the great arm, fast. Playmakers, when things break down, also play with zero heart and make really lousy decisions on the field. And you draft guys like that, you plug them into your uh, franchise as the face of your franchise and the leader of your offense, and then you wonder why you struggle offensively. And I'm going to say this about quarterbacks or any football player, leopards don't change their spots. If you've got a kid who has proven to you out of the gates that he is going to fight you on doing stuff right, get him out. He will not change. And he's going to pick the worst situation to show what kind of a guy he is. He's either going to fold his tent and tap out when the chips are down or when it's nut cutting time and he has to make the right decision. He goes the way that he wants to go or he predetermines it or he makes the ooh ah throw and you walk off the field as a coach with an L. Okay. And in the high school setting, more than college, more than the NFL, in the high school setting from coast to coast in the fall, you're going to find the football teams with their starting quarterback who comes straight out of central casting. 
and you all know what I'm talking about. If you can remember the movie Varsity Blues and Paul Walker, the quarterback, okay, blonde, blue eyes, Joe Cool, dated the cheerleader, drove the cool car, so on and so forth, you know, um, those guys are all over the place playing high school football. The problem with quarterbacks that come out of central casting is they're usually posers. They're not ballers and they're not great decision makers because they're selfish and uncoachable. That's the number one skill that your quarterback must have. If you look at, um, the, the best quarterbacks in college, the best quarterbacks in the NFL, and uh, you look at what they do on the field and why they're successful and why their completion percentage is high and why they throw touchdown passes and move the ball offensively and score a bunch of points. It's the quarterback's deci decision-making ability that lights that fuse for the offense. That's the number one skill. As I said, all others are moot points if your quarterback isn't a great decision maker. Coaches, coach it up and demand it from your quarterback. This is QB Unfiltered. And remember, always throw the ball short to guys who can score. See ya.